Good morning. Well, it's day 10 or something, I don't know. Everybody's in lockdown because of this coronavirus. I thought I'd come out and work on the van some more. I want to take it on a trip, but right now is not really the time to be doing trips anyways. Today I'm going to install the uh, battery monitor. It's the BMV 700 Victron Energy battery monitor. What this does is this connects to the shunt. Let me uh, see if I can get this camera deal to work for me here. So this battery monitor is gonna connect to the shunt. This is the shunt. It's gonna go up into the, uh, in the house side of the RV. So I can uh, verify that everything's working right, that the charger's working correctly, everything. This is the negative to the batteries. If you remember from my last video, or you could reference the other video, uh, nothing is between the shunt and the batteries at all, okay? So it's just negative from batteries to the shunt. This wire right here is gonna run all the way through the RV and plug into the back of the battery monitor. That's gonna give us all the information we need from the battery monitor. What I need to do is take this positive and connect it to my positive bus bar. And then uh, something I've never seen or heard any of the other YouTube van people or solar people talk about is torque settings. If your nuts and bolts aren't torqued properly, you're gonna produce heat. And heat is uh, not good in a situation like this. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna torque each of these nuts to the proper specifications. Some of them I'm gonna have to look up on the old WeberNet because I don't know what they are. The manufacturer didn't send torque specs with them, but that stuff is uh, quite critical if you want a safe operation, especially with something like this. I've got 600 amp hours of lithium battery that are literally two feet below my bed. Uh, 6,000 watt inverter. I don't want problems with that. 750 watt solar on the roof. There's a lot of things that can go wrong with this. And I actually don't recommend somebody do this. It's kind of crazy really. But if you do it properly, it should be totally safe. Um, just be careful with what you're doing, okay? I'm going to uh, take these things apart and torque spec everything and finish putting them back together. I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna fully install this yet. I want it back here under the bed so that I can verify everything. What I wanna do is deplete my batteries and see if in the Arizona sun, I can get a full charge or how much of a charge I can get in a day. I know I can run the air conditioning in this van all night long on just the batteries. And with the solar, of course, I'll be able to run it all day as well. But I wanna see how, uh, how efficient everything is. A couple guys made comments on the, uh, my battery video that the BMS doesn't work, the specs don't add up. Well, the published, the website that I bought these from has a generic BMS, but with everything you can modify it. So I had them modify it to fit the BMS needs that I need. And I'll pull those up and I'll put the specs in for the BMS. Battery management systems are pretty generic. You can make your own. It's not a big deal, but you know, it's the internet. So, Let's uh, let's get to work on this. See what these batteries are saying. Pruned that tree with this cute little tiny chainsaw that hooks on to your weed whacker. Check in later, or up here or here, I don't know, somewhere I'll put a link into this cool little chainsaw that hooks up to your weed whacker. Back to you, John. All right, that's it for the breaking news. Uh, Anyways, we got a lot of projects going on here around the urban homestead. I don't know what we call it. I call it the house. I think the nephew called it the ur urban homestead a while ago. I decided to charge the batteries up entirely off of the uh, uh, inverter charger. It's 
I got my cool stealth little plug there plugged into the barn. It's charging the batteries up. They're about 88% right now. What I plan on doing is once they're all set, then I'm gonna connect the solar through the solar charge controller, have the batteries, everything all ready to go, flip the breaker. Hopefully we don't burn it down. But uh, if I start to get all the numbers that I wanna see, I'm gonna fire up the air conditioner, start uh, burning down the batteries and see how nice they recharge. Right now we've got some pretty good cloud cover. So I don't expect much today, which is kind of good for a first time firing up the solar power. I don't want to burn the place down. But uh, we'll get this thing all buttoned up and done, then probably take it on a road trip this week. This is always the most nerve wracking part, applying power to any electronic thing for the first time. You don't want to damage it. Something I wanted to point out, in uh, the video where I set up the batteries, I had them wired wrong. Um, so I have positive, 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 and then I run this last positive all the way back to my Frankenstein switch. Uh, before, I just had this wire wasn't here, and I just fed it. I fed the switch. Let me see if I could talk today. It's early. I fed the switch off of one battery, and then I just connected these other two batteries. That was incorrect. So don't do that. If you wanna see how not to do it, check out that other video. This is the proper way. Um, just because this thing was not cheap and I don't wanna kill it, I'm gonna go through, read the manual again real quick, cause you know, speed reader or whatever. And then uh, we'll fire it up. Rooster's all happy. There's literally not a cloud in the sky today. So, should be a great day for making power. Let's do it. Okay, so I just put the cover back on and it's asking me questions. I'm just gonna go through. Charging source, solar. Verify battery voltage, we have 12 volt. Uh, let's see, equalize absorb float. Let me compare that with my batteries. Stand by. Okay, that's within the range of what the battery manufacturer says. Uh, the time, date. Uh, let's see, I guess I could do that. It is 7.28. Oh shoot. <laughs> Whoops. Sending data, I don't know what that means. I don't know what it's doing. It's doing something. Thirteen point two volts. It's all the watts. So it's got power. Resting 13.2 volts. This the Victron battery monitor says 13.3, so that's close enough. Um, I don't want to fry it, so I'm gonna read a little bit more. I'm so nervous to flip that breaker that takes the power from the solar onto the uh, through the solar charge controller. This thing's expensive and kind of fragile. Stand by. Well, checked everything. Here goes. crack a -doo. I'm nervous, but let's see. Nothing blew up. That's cool. Something ain't right. All right, so I ended up changing quite a few things. I gotta go through and finish uh, securing all these uh, wires. 
Um, my breakers were, this one was a regular house breaker. I needed a 12 volt breaker. So there wasn't enough power from the panels to even make anything work there. So I've got everything reset up. The Victron says the batteries are 13.3 volts. The Midnight Classic says they're 13.2. Argue with that. It's nerve wracking, but here goes 5.6 in. Let's see if I can get that with that glare. like everything's working <laughs> that's cool all right now i got to put my cover back on the batteries i'm gonna let that charge see what they do um you know what i think i'm gonna set up my kilowatt and run the air conditioner today run the batteries down and see if that bad boy will charge it it might have to be a tomorrow project but anyways this is working out awesome it's uh, 38 volts in currently. Let me show you what we got up on the roof. 750 watts of solar panels. It's a beautiful, look, the van's clean enough you can see my reflection. Beautiful sunny day, but check these out. Look how dirty they are. So I'm probably gonna hose these off just to see what kind of difference that'll make. That's actually a good idea for a video. Anyways, we're in business. Thanks for watching.